Right, so last time we were looking at uh, properties of continuous functions and we proved that as a consequence of intermediate value property that if i is an interval, the domain is an interval, then the range of the function is also an interval. We uh, started looking at uh, the special case when i is a close bounded interval, what can you say about the range? So let us look at that. So f is defined on i and taking values in r. Let us say i is a b close bounded and f continuous. So claim is that f of i is also a close bounded interval. We already know one, we know f of i is a interval. So let us, uh, and we had uh, proved last time that it is also uh, bounded, right? So we also proved, we proved f of i is also bounded. And the basic idea was that if it is not bounded, then there is a sequence in the range which is goes to absolute value of that goes to infinity. Look at the images, free images, that being uh, in I which is close bounded should have a convergent subsequence. But that is not possible because if it has a convergent subsequence, then the image must be convergent, but that is unbounded. So that cannot converge. So that was the idea. We had proved that. So let us prove the third, that namely f of i is closed. So let us look at uh, y, uh, be y be such that there exists a sequence yn belonging to the range there is a sequence uh, y n belonging to f of i such that y n converges to y. So what is to be shown? To show that f of i is closed, we are taking a sequence y n which is convergent to some point y. So uh, to show that y belongs to f of i, right? That will prove that f of i is a closed set. So let us uh, start looking at, because what is given is i is close bounded, so we have to shift everything to the domain. So yn belongs to f of i implies yn must be equal to f of xn for some xn belonging to i. Right? Uh, for every n, so for every n this is happening, so implies x n is a sequence in the interval i, which is given to be closed and bounded, so it must have a convergent subsequence. So implies, because i comp uh, compact or close bounded, There exists a subsequence, say x and k of x n such that x and k converges to a point x belonging to the interval line. So that is compactness. Every sequence has got a subsequence which is convergent in the set. 
but then f continuous implies f of x and k converges to f of x. But what is f of x and k? f of x and k is equal to y and k, right? Which converges, where does y and k converge? Because the sequence y n is convergent, right, to y. So that is what is given to us, y n converges to y. Every subsequence must also converge to y. So now look at this statement one, look at the statement two. So one and two limit being unique implies f of x is equal to y. So the idea is from the range, shift everything to the domain, analyze and come back, okay? So that proves and f of i is also close. So what we have proved is uh, if uh, i is a closed bounded interval, then f of i also is a closed bounded interval, right? So let us write this as uh, a slightly more elaborate way. So let us, uh, so we had uh, i is a b, f of i is a closed bounded interval right so it has some endpoints okay it is closed it is bounded so let us say this is small m and capital m so let us write corollary of the above let then what does it imply what does it mean that the range f of i is the closed bounded interval small m and to capital M. That means small m is in the range of the function, right? So implies for every x belonging to i, m is less than or equal to f of x is less than or equal to capital M, right? Range is equal to small m to capital M. That means what? Small m is the smallest value of the function small m is the smallest value of the function and capital M is the largest right, value of the function on the interval a, b. Not only that, small m is in the range. So small m must be equal to image of some point, right? So implies there exists some, let us call x min and some x max belonging to a, b such that the value at x point x min is equal to small m less than or equal to value at every point is less than or equal to is less than or equal to capital M which is the value at the point x max. Is that clear? I am just reinterpreting that result for the, if the domain is a closed bounded interval a, b, we just now proved range must be also a closed bounded interval. So if domain is a, b, range is small m to capital M, what does it mean that range is equal to this? That means every value of the function is between small m and capital M, right? That means function is bounded. Small m is the minimum value, capital M is the maximum value and small m and capital M being in the range, they are the values taken at some point, right? So what we are saying is, so you can, this corollary can be rewritten as, so rewrite. If you like, you can write it as a theorem. It is due to V stress. So the theorem says, Every continuous function f from a b to r 
So, I am just rewriting nothing, doing nothing more than that is uh, continue is bounded and attains its maximum and minimum. Right? There are points where the maximum value of the function is. The range is bounded. So, by least upper bound property, it must have greatest lower bound and least upper bound. And what we are saying is this theorem says that not only they exist by the uh, completeness property, they are actually attained at some points in the domain. So, this is very useful in proving uh, when we analyze maxima, minima of functions and uh, optimization problems. Okay. So, that is uh, <coughs> okay. So, we uh, showed in fact, if you look at the proof, the proof does not use the fact that uh, other than the fact that you are in interval. right? If you do not want to claim that the range is an interval, you can just assume domain is a compact set, then the range is a right, also compact set, it is close bounded, that is all. Only because of intermediate value property, we get intervals get mapped into intervals, right. Otherwise, the same proof works. We are saying that if you have domain to be a compact set, right, then the range is also a compact, range is also closed and bounded, right. So, we did not use the fact that uh, the domain was an interval in proving that the range is a closed bounded set. Only an interval we use intermediate value property and those things. So, uh, for a uh, connected set, continuity preserves connectedness, image of a connected set is connected, image of a compact set is compact. Let us look at one or two some more properties of continuous functions before we go over to something else. Okay, so, let us look at uh, right. There are some <coughs> okay, uh, you must have already come across, but let me define it. What is called a monotone function? A function f in a domain D contained in R to R is only for real valued functions of on reals uh, is called monotonically increasing if for every x 1, x 2 belonging to the domain. The name is uh, indicative of what, what we are looking at. x 1 less than or equal to x 2 should imply the image f of x 1 is less than or equal to f of x 2, right, increasing. As you move from left to right, your function is going up and up, okay, geometrically. So, this is monotonically increasing and similarly, you can define what is monotonically. So, 1, 2 monotono, monotonically decreasing if x 1, x 2 belonging to the domain x 1 less than x 2 less than or equal to f the point x 2 implies f of x 1 is bigger than or equal to f of x 2. The graph is going down and down as you move from left to right. So, that is decreasing. Keep in mind uh, we are saying less than or equal to okay monotonically increasing. I am not saying this is a strict inequality. If we want to say the function, if we want to indicate that f of x 1 is strictly less than, then we will add the word strictly monotonically increasing and strictly monotonically decreasing. We will qualify what is increasing and decreasing if we want to say strict. Okay. So, uh, let us just a function is called monotone. if it is either monotonically increasing or monotonically decreasing. 
If the function is either increasing or decreasing, we are not very particular whether it is increasing or decreasing. We are only interested in knowing that it is increasing or it is decreasing everywhere. Okay. See, increasing and decreasing are not properties of the function at a point. These are properties of the function over the domain. By limit, continuity are properties of the function at a point. So, that is the difference. This is the property of the function over the a domain, over a subset of the domain, if at least. So, monotone if it is either increasing or decreasing. So, uh, uh, let us observe our observations or properties. Let us look at one, suppose f in a domain d to r is monotone, is strictly, let us say, strictly monotonically, strictly monotone. So, let us say strictly monotonically increasing or let us say decreasing, one of them. Either it is strictly increasing or strictly decreasing, it is given to us. Then this implies obvious property that f is 1 1, f is to be 1 1. Is that okay? If the function is either strictly increasing or strictly decreasing, it should to be 1 1. Is it clear everybody why is so? Because if not, then what will happen? at two different points x 1, x 2, f of x 1 is equal to f of x 2, but either x 1 will be less than x 2 or x 2 is uh, bigger than x 1, either of it. So, either of it will contradict the fact it is monotonically increasing or decreasing. Okay. Let us look at uh, what about the converse of this statement? Suppose we are given, given f is strictly monotone. Can we say no, given uh, if function is 1 1 sorry other way around. So, converse will be if f is given f is strictly we are looking at the converse of it suppose f is uh, 1 1. Can we say f is strictly increasing or decreasing? Right? Obviously not. Many examples. Like y equal to x square, for example, you can look at. Okay, or any function could be anything. One one graph could be a weird function. So this is the graph of the function say on the interval a to b right it is 1 1 every horizontal line cuts the graph only once so it is 1 1 okay if you just want to look at the geometrically but it is not increasing or decreasing okay it's clear okay. or if you want you can make it more complicated right you can just change the graph to something like you can do that anything is possible 1 1, but still it is not monotonically increasing or decreasing right. So, what is it? So, when can we say It is given to be 1 1, but still not ok. Ok, okay. when can we say uh, a 1 1 function is, oh sorry, uh, wait. Uh, did I uh, 
this is not 1 1 sorry I, I, I gave a very wrong graph kind of a thing okay I want example of a function which is 1 1 right but it is not strictly increasing or decreasing so can you think of a graph of such a function a function okay which is 1 1 Okay, which is 1 1, but is not increasing or decreasing. Yeah, quite simple again. Okay, let me just change this uh, to what we want. We want a graph of a function, right, which is 1 1. Can you think of drawing a picture of such a thing? I want a function which is 1 1, right? But it is not monotonically increasing or decreasing. Just a picture, I do not want a formula, right? So it seems it is not possible to draw it, looks like you may not, but let us let us try to draw if we want to draw it what what should happen so this is the point a and this is the point b i start here okay and i keep on increasing right uh, it is 1 1 okay but i want to break the property it is increasing but i still want to keep the property it is monotone right so I can't go from here. So, from, but I can go like this. Is this okay function? It goes up to here, and then it starts here. At this point, this is the point C. It goes up to here. On the left side, A to C, it is monotonically increasing. On the right side, it is monotonically decreasing. Right? And it is one one this function is not 1 1 shall we make it 1 1 ok so let us make it 1 1 still it is not very good so let me uh, let me make it 1 1 so how do I make it 1 1 so let me take this now it is 1 1 right so that is how we experiment in mathematics so I have got a function which is right which is 1 1 but it is not monotone in the interval in the domain a to b why it is not happening because there is a break in the graph of the function so probably it is true if the function is continuous and 1 1 right then it should be monotone so let us uh, write that as a theorem so uh, when the function is 1 1 uh, what can you say if a function uh, a function is 1 1 and continuous so let us try to analyze a theorem f from uh, on a interval i let us keep it on a interval i okay to uh, R is continuous and 1 1 then F is monotone if it is continuous and 1 1 that should be 1 1 so essentially what we are saying is we start uh, say at the point A okay and you decide whether you want to go up or want to go down so once you start drawing right you start going up you cannot come down because 1 1 will be contradicted right so the function should be monotonically increasing right so let us uh, write a proof of that so proof
So let me uh, let us discuss the proof first. So let us say. Um, so if let us assume uh, f is not. So this is also a good idea of uh, not one one, uh, not uh, monotone. If the function is not monotone, then what has should happen? Mathematically, what I should I say? There are, say for example, then it should happen. I should have three points, A, B, and C. Right. So then implies there exists A less than B less than C, below in I. But what should happen? F of A. So either F of A. Should I? What should happen? If it's monotone, f of a will be less than f of b. Is bigger than f of b, right? And f of b is less than f of c. So, I, but either this or other way, right? Something uh, other in, uh, inequality should happen. So, what is happening? Here is a f of a. Or what should happen? F of a, the, or let me write that also. If it's less than f of b, is bigger than f of c. One of these things should, should happen, right? One of the things should be contradicted. So now let us see. Let us say f of. Let us uh, to visualize f of b is somewhere here. So let me write f of b. And f of it is bigger than f of a. So probably here is f of a. It is bigger than f of a. Are you able to see, or shall I draw a bigger picture? Maybe I think a bigger picture will be a better idea. So let me draw somewhere here. So here is a, here is b, and here is my uh, sorry, here is b, and here is my c. Three points we have got. So here is uh, f of b. This is f of b, and probably here is f of a, because we are looking at the case. F of b is bigger than f of a as well as bigger than f of c. So f of b, and uh, f of c either is here, right, or it is in between somewhere here, right. So two possibility: either it is f of c. Is less than f of b, but it can be bigger than f of a. We don't know what is, or this could be somewhere in, in between here. So let us say this is like one of the cases. Everything will be similar. Now what is happening? So look at this. This value f of a is between c and b. This value f of a is between f of c and f of So f at b is less than f of a is less than f of c. Function is given to be continuous. So f of a must be attained. F of a must be attained at some value in between b and c by intermediate value property. This value is between these two values. So implies by intermediate value property there exists a point x1 such that f of x1 is equal to a and where is x1? X1 is between b and c. Is that okay? Now f of x1 is a. Oh, uh, uh, f of x1 is not f of a. Sorry, not a. F of a. Right? In in between value is f of a. So there is a point where the value f of a is taken, and where is x one? Here is x one. X one is between b and c. So f of a is taken at a as well as at x one, but x one cannot be equal to a. So this contradicts one one ness of the function f. Is that okay for everybody? Clear? Yes. 
if f of c was up and f of a was down, then we would have said c is taken somewhere else also between the point a and again there will be a contradiction, right. Okay. So, this is implies f is not 1 1. So, we analyze this case with a property that it is f of b is bigger than f of a, f of a. So, we specialize it say one, one of the cases is this. If it is other way around, right, a and c, then again there will be a contradiction. Similarly, you can analyze this one also. Is okay? So, basic idea is the 1 1 property and continuity implies it has to be monotone, right. If not, it will contradict intermediate value property somewhere. So, write all other cases, other cases similar. So, write down the other ca possible cases, right. We looked at when this is in between, <coughs> right. Other cases f of c is in between f of b less than f of c less than f of a. So, that gives you two <coughs> and similarly two other cases. So, uh, a function which is continuous and 1 1 has to be monotone. So, this is the theorem that we just know prove. 1 1 continuous it has to be monotone. Right. Let us look at monotone function slightly more uh,